We are. We strive to. Welcome back to Crosshawk, everyone. We are going to begin again in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you that you are a God who loves each one of us so much. We thank you during this Easter season for the love that was demonstrated for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you today would give us what we need to see the Holy Spirit guiding us and working in our lives in every moment. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wanted today to begin with a question for all of you that some Crosswalk Kids actually asked me about a year ago when we were still meeting on campus on Sundays and breaking into our small groups. I generally like to walk around and check in with small groups if I'm able to, and I checked in on a small group one morning who brought me a question that had come up in their small group. And the question was, where was Jesus's body buried after he died the second time? So we know that he was born, he lived, he was crucified, he died, he rose on Easter. And then after he rose on Easter, what happened after that? What happened after he died after Easter? And I want you to listen for the answer to that question in the first reading for today, which comes from the Acts of the Apostles. This is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. So listen as I read this for the answer to that question, what did they do with Jesus' body after he died a second time? In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning, until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upwards towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. So what's the answer to the question that those crosswalkers asked me last year? Where was Jesus' body buried after he died the second time? Well, the answer, kind of a trick question, is that Jesus did not die a second time. Jesus died once on the cross and rose on Easter. And the reason that Jesus isn't still here in that human form on earth is because he ascended into heaven. So he didn't die twice. He didn't die a second time. But he left earth in his ascension into heaven. And that is what we read about today in the first reading from Acts, is about Jesus's ascension. Now, the word ascension is kind of a big word, but we again say it when we profess the creed at mass. We say, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he intercedes for us. 
And this is good news for us today because if it were left up to us and to our own power and to our own ability, we wouldn't be able to get to the Father's house in heaven, to God's life, to God's full happiness. But thank God it is not left up to us to do that. We have Jesus who entered heaven through his ascension, not through death. And so the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that only Christ can open to all of us such access that we, the members of his body, might have confidence that we too shall go where he, our head and our source, has preceded us. Which basically means that when Jesus ascended into heaven, he was preparing the way for us to join him in heaven after we die. And so when we sing that song in Mass, Lord, we need you, this is because we actually do need Jesus. We need Jesus and the word that he speaks to us in the Gospels and in the Old Testament and in the New Testament because the person of Jesus prepared the way for us by ascending into heaven so that we can go and join him and God the Father in heaven. Without Jesus, without God, without the Holy Spirit, we can't do it. We cannot get to heaven by ourselves. But thank God for Jesus who taught us not only how to live when we are on earth by bringing about God's kingdom, by serving and loving those around us, but also what it means to enter into heaven and to join God the Father and the community of saints in heaven. And so we know that Jesus Christ, who is the one and eternal covenant, entered, this is what the catechism says, into a sanctuary that was not made by human hands, like, you know, a coffin or a tomb or into an urn that you might put someone's ashes after they die. But instead, he entered into heaven itself. Now he appears in the presence of God and intercedes on our behalf. So that's what it means when we say that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, is that he was taken up into heaven, he ascended into heaven, and he now sits in heaven with God the Father. And because he experienced our humanity when he was born of the Virgin Mary, when he had friends, when he cried, when he ate, when he slept, when he was frustrated and got angry, and he experienced what it means to be a human, he now is in heaven praying for us, hearing our prayers, and loving us because he knows what it feels like to be on earth and to be walking the walk and to be doing our best and trying our best to love those around us as he called us to do. And so this is a day, this day that we remember the Ascension, that we celebrate with great joy because it's not only important that we know the facts of Jesus ascended into heaven and the fact of what happened at Pentecost that we'll learn about next Sunday. It's not so much that we are talking about these things because we want to be able to recite all the feast days of the church, although that's a great skill to have, but it's more because what happened at Jesus' ascension means something very important to us as his followers. It means that we follow Jesus not only in the way that he lived his life and the way that he spoke truth in a loving way to everybody that he encountered, but also that we follow Jesus in the way that he made for us to heaven. And so our journey with being friends with Jesus by being loved by Jesus does not end when we die, and thank God for that, but instead it continues even more so after we die and go to be in heaven with God the Father, with Jesus, with all of our loved ones, and with the community of saints who's praying for us all the time. And so our challenge today when we hear about the ascension and we hear that big word that might seem confusing to us is to remember that Jesus was always teaching us something. Even when he was just a little baby born in Bethlehem, every single example from his life 
is a lesson to us about what it means to be a follower of him. And in his ascension, he left us with this very special mission that we are to love everyone that we meet and that we are to share the good news with them about how much God loves every single one of us. So our challenge is being like Jesus in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, and in his ascension. All of those very important parts of his life show us a different way that we can speak that life into other people's lives that might not know about Jesus, might not know what it means to be loved by him, or maybe they just need a little reminder today. And we are called to do that very thing. And the power of Jesus's ascension gives us that strength and that reminder to go and fearlessly love those around us, even those who it's not always easy to love.